everyone so today i swati verma assistant professor at kolkata university school of medical and allied sciences shall be discussing with you about types of transitions which is an instrumental methods of analysis so in the previous lecture we have discussed about the transitions the different types of transition that will occur due to different types of electrons which can be present in your molecules so the three different types of electrons that a molecule can have is your sigma electron pi electron and your non bonding electron which is represented by n so on the basis of these we can have three different types of transition which we will discuss here so we will discuss about the electronic transitions involving your n sigma and pi molecular orbitals so first we have to, uh, we have mentioned about the different types of transitions then the wavelength range at which this particular transition will occur and then we will see about the different types of examples in which these particular transitions are occurring so first we can have your sigma electrons non bonding electrons and your pi electrons your sigma electrons are present in your single bond containing atoms your non bonding electrons are present in a molecule which is having the hetero atom having free radical and then we have pi electrons in your con your double bond or your triple bond containing systems so the transition due to sigma orbitals or your sigma electrons can be your sigma to sigma star transition here this particular sigma refers to your ground state that is your sigma orbital which is present in the ground state and here your sigma star refers to your sigma star orbital which is present in your excited state so this particular sigma star refers to the excited state so this particular sigma to sigma star transition involves the transition of sigma electrons which are present in your ground state to the sigma star non bonding orbital that is your higher orbital or your excited state so this is your non bonding orbital and this is your bonding orbital so in the first i have mentioned the bonding orbital and in the second i have mentioned the non bonding orbital which refers to your excited state now the sigma to sigma star transition that is the transition occurring in your single bond containing compounds occur at the wavelength range less than 200 nanometer so the examples are your alkenes next we have n to sigma star transition so this particular transition involves the transition of your non bonding electrons that is electrons present in your hetero atom to the sigma star non bonding orbital now this particular transition occurs in the wavelength range of 160 to 260 and the examples of this particular transition is an oxygen nitrogen sulfur and an halogen compounds next we have pi to pi star transition so this particular transition involves the transition of your pi electrons to the pi anti bonding orbital and this particular transition occurs at a wavelength range from 200 to 500 and this transition occurs in alkenes carbonyl alkynes and your azo compounds next we have n to pi star transition that is transition of your non bonding electrons to your pi anti bonding orbital this transition occurs at a wavelength range from 250 to 600 and this particular transition occurs in your carbonyl compounds moving forward this is the energy required for your various transitions and these particular transitions will obey this particular order so we have sigma to sigma star transition n to sigma star transition pi to pi star transition and your n to pi star transition so the highest energy is taken by your sigma to sigma star transition next is your n to pi star transition then we have pi to pi star transition and n to pi star transition 
so the highest energy is by sigma to sigma star then comes to n to sigma star pi to pi star and n to pi star now this is a detailed description of each and every electronic transition so first transition that we will discuss is your sigma to sigma star transition so these transitions require the greatest amount of energy and these generally occur in your vacuum ultraviolet region at a wavelength below 150 nanometer so these particular sigma to sigma star transitions require the highest amount of energy and will occur in which region these occur in your vacuum ultraviolet region at a wavelength which is below 150 nanometer typically your ch bond will absorb at about 125 nanometer whereas your carbon carbon bonds occur at your 135 nanometer so your ch bonds absorption occur at a wavelength 125 nanometer and your carbon carbon absorption occur at your 135 nanometer so we can see here that your absorption by ch bonds requires higher amount of energy as it is occurring at lower wavelength than comparison to your cc bond which requires lesser amount of energy in comparison to your ch bond because the vacuum uv region is not accessible in most uv visible spectrophotometers so the transitions are of use for routine analysis as we know that this particular vacuum uv region is not present in each and every visible uv visible spectrophotometers so the sigma sigma transitions are not of use for routine analysis all the sigma bonds that is your single bonds and because these particular transitions from sigma bonds occur at energies that are beyond the range of most of the instruments so these compounds with only single bonds do not have measurable uv visible absorptive band as these particular transitions are not accessible in each and every spectrophotometer and these are higher energetic transitions so the examples of your sigma sigma transition is in saturated hydrocarbons like methane propane and its absorption occurs near 150 milli micron now the next transition that we have is your n to sigma star transitions so these particular transitions will generally require your less energy in comparison to sigma to sigma star transition as we have seen that the sigma star transition requires the highest amount of energy and then we come have n to sigma star transition so typically n to sigma star transitions occurs in the long wavelength end of the vacuum ultraviolet region and short wavelength end of the near ultraviolet region so these are at the end of your vacuum ultraviolet region that is 150 and and at your near ultraviolet region starting of your near ultraviolet region that is 250 milli micron often an n to sigma star transition occurs whenever your organic compound contains an hetero atom so it can have nitrogen oxygen sulfur fluorine chlorine bromine or iodine as the hetero atom so if a molecule is having these particular hetero atoms then it may have transition that is n to sigma star transition so the absorptive band that are characteristics of alkyl halides amines ether sulfides corresponds to your n to sigma star transitions this type of transition takes place in saturated compounds having one hetero atom with unshared pair of electron that is n electrons so the examples of your n to sigma star transitions are your saturated halides alcohols ethers aldehyde ketones amines etc next we have your pi to pi star transition as you know this particular transition occurs in your unsaturated compounds so the molecule that exhibits your pi to pi star transitions contain a double or triple bonds or aromatic rings these type of transitions occurs in the unsaturated center of the molecules that is in the compounds containing your double or triple bonds in the aromatic compounds the examples of these particular pi to pi star transitions are your alkenes alkynes cyanides azo compounds carbonyl 
compounds. Next, this particular transition requires your less energy in comparison to N2 sigma star transition and absorption, which occurs at your longer wavelength. Next transition that we have is your N2 pi star transition. This particular transition requires the least amount of energy. So in this transition, your electrons of the unshared pair on hydro atom that is non-bonding get excited to your pi star anti-bonding orbital. This type of transition requires the least amount of energy out of all the transitions and occur at long wavelength. So the example of N2 pi star transition we can have is your saturated aldehyde. So the pi to pi star transition and the N2 pi star transition which occurs in the near ultraviolet and visible region is from 180 to 700 nanometer. Because these particular transition occurs in an easily observable spectral range, so these are useful. Next, we will discuss about Frankodon principle. This is an important principle. So, whenever a molecule absorbs UV visible light of a particular energy, whenever we impose a UV visible radiation over a particular molecule, what will happen? We assume that at first approximation, at the first instance, whenever your UV visible radiation falls to over your sample, what will happen? Your one electron is promoting to a higher energy level. So your molecule electron, which is present at your lower energy level, will show promotion to your higher energy level and that all other electrons remain unaffected. So at the first approximation, as your UV visible radiation falls to your sample, your only one single electron will promote it from your lower energy level to your higher energy level. So this particular excitation state which is produced is formed in a very short time. So this excitation, this particular excitation of electrons occurs in a very short time duration that is your 10 to the power minus 15 second and as a consequence of that, that is during electronic excitation, the atoms of the molecules do not move. As you can see that this is a very less time that is 10 to the power minus 15 second. So the energy state, the excited state which is produced by the promotion of electron requires this particular time duration. So whenever this particular transition occurs, or we do not see the any particular movement in the molecule. So depending upon the symmetry and the value of your Emax, Emax is your molar extension coefficient. The transitions can be your allowed transition or forbidden transition. So on the basis of this particular Emax value, that is the value of molar absorptivity, we can have two types of transitions, allowed transitions and forbidden transition. So what are allowed transitions? Your allowed transitions are that particular transition which we can see in our spectrum and these particular transitions are having the value of Emax are 10 to the power 4 or more than 10 to the power 4. So we can say that the transitions having the value of Emax 10 to the power 4 or more than 10 to the power 4 are highly intense transitions that is, they are of high intensity and are referred to as allowed transition. Whereas forbidden transitions are those particular transitions having the value of Emax that less than 10 to the power 4. You can say that 10 to 10 to the power 3. And these particular transitions are your least intensity transition. These are very less intense and are referred to as forbidden transitions. The very common example of a forbidden transitions are your N2 pi star transitions. Generally, you can see that that the N2 pi star transitions are of less intensity, are having the value of Emax very less. Either they are having 10 or 10 to the power 2 or 3. So these are forbidden transitions. Next, these are your certain references that you can refer to study these particular topics in detail. And thank you so much.